we now have almost 80% of all of our bills being paid for by the local government agencies. We had to do it one at a time. But now we have a whole packet that we give to our families when they come to the workshops and how they, they are to go to the insurance companies and then get turned down and then go to the government. Um, and uh, you know, it's, it's gotten to the point now where almost any family that really wants it can fight for it. We have had a few families that have had to go to court to really battle for it because their agency just said, we're not going to pay for this. And those families are always winning. There's, there was just a landmark case just recently that came out where, where a local government agency was forced to pay uh, for the last three years of service because they refused it. Because it's so clear and so easily, so well documented the, the progress that these kids are making that it, it needs to be covered based on the laws that are, that are currently there. I don't know what the situation will be like in Norway, but I do know that there's a lot of LOVA style ABA providers already here doing ABA. That's why I was so surprised because Norway has always been held out as one of the European countries that has some of the most ABA. Probably because your English is generally so good. Because um, ABA was really developed in the English language more than anywhere else. Um, because people can come here and speak in English to you, I know that there's a lot of people, uh, I don't know if it's mostly in Oslo or, or where, but there's a lot of people who are doing ABA, but they're doing more of the traditional style, LOVA style, sitting down and doing most of the work at a table, using their own therapist. The teaching looks more clinical because it's, I teach, I write, I teach, I write, I teach, I write. I'm maybe using limited reinforcers. I'm not doing it throughout the entire environment. I'm not working on the, the different parts of language the way that we do in verbal behavior. But that has to be available, and there has to be somebody getting coverage for it somewhere. So I would need, you need to research that a little bit, and I think that's something that Janina would probably be doing as she started to accept some more families here. Um, Can I know. say something? Yeah. So a land prize, so we are, uh, have got about uh, 75 to 80 land prizes in Germany who are paying for uh, our service. That's pretty much what you can call a commune, I think. Yeah, I think so. So uh, the structures here are pretty different, but I'm writing a study about uh, Spanier, about that program that they've done uh, from the beginning until now. And uh, of course, we will try to find ways uh, to, get, to, get, to get the coast covered. Because it happened in Germany, why it shouldn't be possible to get that done here? And in Germany, we were hit with every roadblock possible. People were fighting us every possible way, but the, the, the results are so clear and so obvious. And what we were doing is so much better than what they were already paying for. And generally, what we were asking was less money. So because we were asking for less money, and because what we were doing was being more successful, it wasn't a hard sell once we, once we got them to be willing to sit down in the room with us. But that's the process, that every family had to go themselves and go through that additional fight. Not only did they have to learn how to teach their own kids, but they had to learn how to, how to, to get a hold of the right people in the government and how to follow up and to make sure that they got their meetings and to schedule a meeting for us to come and be a part of it. Uh, I believe that all services should be covered by, by the government agencies or whoever is responsible for children with disabilities. Um, and they should cover whatever is going to be the most effective for those kids. And if you go anywhere where there's been a scientific look at what affects children with autism, uh, Applied Behavior Analysis has the most research and studies and support. The American Surgeon General in the 1999 report listed um, ABA as the only uh, therapy intervention with over 30 years of um, scientific support depending for long-term success with children with autism. Um, the number of studies is astounding nowadays as to what's available, what's out there. We have several studies that we've translated to German on our website. Um, there's lots of studies that can be found and translated into languages. So once people know what it is that they need to be finding for themselves, they find a way to get it, and then they find a way to get it covered. The problem is, is a lot of people just don't even know it exists. It's just because it started in, in a different country, in a different language, um, it, it didn't travel the way that it could have, and it's become so much. And the few places that did hear about it, heard about it in the 60s and 70s, when it was very weak, when, when the techniques were not there. Um, and there was a lot of misunderstandings based on that. Um, people think that reinforcement is bribing a child to work. Um, but when you really understand what the principle of reinforcement is and how it works and how you incorporate it into your everyday life, you see that it has nothing to do with that. A bribe is something you say before a behavior. A bribe would be something you would do in the antecedent condition. If you do this, then you'll get this. Reinforcement is something that happens after a behavior. It's basically saying, it's basically showing the child that Good choices lead to good things. You're not working for a cookie. You're working because when you work in life, generally think better things happen for you. And the sooner we can teach a child that, the better. Because we all have to learn that at some point. We don't like to go to work every day. And I wouldn't do it if there wasn't going to be some kind of a, of, of 
reinforcement for me. I enjoy the families I work with, I enjoy the kids, but even that wouldn't be enough. I need to be able to make money to do this, like anyone else, to do their jobs. Without that reinforcement, we wouldn't be doing it. We have to find something else to do, because we have to eat, we have to raise our kids. So it doesn't matter. What we have to teach our kids right away, though, is that you don't wait until you get to kindergarten or first grade for the first grade teacher or the second grade teacher to try to teach them. Because by the time that happens, the kids have developed such inappropriate behavior that they're no longer allowed to be in that classroom. That they're just sh shifted out to a special ed classroom. And what happens is they tend to get further and further behind. And they don't necessarily need that. What they need is from the earliest stage, 18 months, as soon as you realize that something's wrong, you need to start an intervention, an early intervention program that's behaviorally based to really start reinforcing the right things so that the child can go into a kindergarten classroom with the basic skills necessary to succeed there. Um, and, and those are the kind of things that we're pushing. So how do we get that to the people? I guess evenings like this, workshops, is what we're doing. My book, um, for those of you who are interested in the book, um, you can purchase it online in a lot of different places. Any of your local um, internet books, book flags will, will sell to you. The cheapest place I know to get it online is this, this website right here. This is through our direct website. Um, and uh, there's also some free stuff on that website as well, some free information. So if there's anyone you think that would benefit from it, or if you'd like to learn more, um, we're going to try, I guess, maybe to do a workshop here if there's enough interest. If not, um, contact our office if you have the ability and interest to come to Germany. We're having a workshop in April um, in Frankfurt. So uh, if there's no more questions, um, I'll say goodnight to you guys. Thank you so much for, for coming and sitting through this, and, and thank you for not falling asleep in the back. <laughs>